swoops on the crown. And massive basket. Three, you are kidding me. And the fire burn brightest. Townsville are WNBL champions for the fourth time. It's one of the most anticipated games of the Signet WFBL season. For the first time in Townsville colours, Sammy Wickham returns to the Bendat Basketball Centre, a place she called home for five seasons to face the team she used to captain, the Perth Lynx. The Lynx will come out firing after a heartbreaking loss to Southside on Wednesday night, while Townsville will continue their quest for back-to-back -back championships. Who will reign supreme in the West? We'll find out after four action-packed quarters. I'm Julia Montesano, joined by the player who hit the game-winning shot against the Lynx on Wednesday, Beck Cole. Beck, you know first how to beat each of these two teams, so what's going to be the key to victory tonight? Yeah, still recovering mentally, emotionally <laughs> from that last game. That's what WNBL is all about, exciting action. And I think to get it done against these two teams, they have one solid centre, so you've got to make sure you're not letting them get early inside presence. And then the point guards, both of them so quick, fantastic off the pick and roll. What defensive scheme are we going to see tonight? I'm really interested in. And then, of course, you have two lots of guards on both teams who can knock down three-point shots. And what a matchup we have here tonight. As I mentioned, Beck, this is Sammy Whitcomb's first time playing in the West as an opponent. She, of course, played five seasons with the Lynx from 2015 to 2023. What do you think is running through her head right now as she prepares to face a team she's had so much success with? It's Sammy Whitcomb. She's a pro. She's going to go out there doing what her job is. And I think as well, almost it's like you're going home a little bit. So I feel like it's similar to LJ when she goes back to Canberra. The, the crowd, the hometown, they give them a, an applause because there's so much respect and so much love there. But as soon as that ball is tossed, you know, sh she's on the opposition and they want Perth to win. But that's what basketball is all about sometimes, going home and embracing those amazing players that have been at those clubs. And of course, on Wednesday night, we spoke about it just briefly in the intro, Beck, but you were a part of a, a massive win on Wednesday night against the Perth Lynx, handing them their first loss of the season. Talk us through what was going through your head when you held, when you nailed your game winning three, and then of course, when your team came back and won the game. Yeah, honestly, I said, girl, you better bend down, use your legs. You've missed your last two corner threes. You better be making this one. But, you know, that's why I love playing. I love pressure shots. I love the atmosphere. I love helping my team. And, you know, we didn't play the first half of basketball that we want to stand for. We went into halftime, had a hard look at ourselves, and we came back out in that second half, and we just chipped away. We stuck together as a team, and I couldn't be more proud of the group. And look at us, pumped. <laughs> <laughs> Very pumped indeed. That was Perth's first loss of the season. And, of course, it has ramifications for them on the ladder because they now dropped to third, three wins and one loss for the season. Same as Townsville, three wins and one loss. And, of course, both those losses came against your Flyers. So very interesting times, but a very close contest to wait tonight, doesn't it? It really is. That top four is, you know, looking juicy, even the top five, top six. And um, I'm interested to see who gets, you know, their second loss tonight. What does that do with the ladder? Obviously, that helps us, the Southside Flyers, which love... We're so glad you're joining us here on Nine Now. But let's take a look at Perth's lineup for tonight. Of course, they're stuck back with their starting five. And why would it, yeah, good Charlotte McDonough, McDonald, sorry, Potter, Bailey, and Atwell. And wow, how good was it to see good child and Potter step up if you're Ryan Petrick? I mean, they were tested with depth with Chibatoni and um, had him missing out last game and Gorman, who's missing again tonight. So it must be good to see that they could step up when needed. It was. Potter was brilliant against us. You know, she was getting that good inside presence with the pick and roll. Um, and then also she was hitting those mid-range jump shots. So making sure you're stopping her, her going left, that's going to be massive. And then good child really stepped up. Uh, you know, we did a great job on McDonald and shutting her down and um, you know pretty good job on Atwell so it was good to see other guards step up and Perth are a run and gun shooting team so that's what they can get that's what they can do and fire are stuck with a similar starting five to what they've got with with all season as well Kudik, Reed, Akuso, Wickham and Roof round out the starting five and of course we talk a lot about Sammy Wickham but Ellis Kudik has had a really good start to the season she's had 17.5 points 
her game. So we'll look out for her to see what she can deliver tonight. Beck, of course, one of your great mates. She is. A shout out to my bestie, Alice Kunek. <laughs> and yeah, she'll be excited and ready to go. She had a groin injury to start the season. And um, now she's yeah, started with two great games. So tip off here in the West at Bendat Basketball Centre. Second versus third, Perth versus Townsville. Annalie Maley's going hard early, but this time the bucket misses. And here is Wickham for the first time in opposition colours at Bendat Basketball Centre. Hands it off to Reed. Guided by Goodchild again, donning that Batman mask. You love to see it. Here's Wickham. And she loves to get the points going for her team. Instead, she feeds a Kuso who can't finish off the good work. Mailey into Goodchild. It's an impressive pace so far and too hot to handle for Goodchild. It is, and that's what Perth is all about. If they're getting stops, they're wanting to run it down your throat. You know, they all have the green light to shoot, go attack the ring. So um, hopefully the Townsville can get some good offensive plays and, you know, get that defensive transition set up. Of course, the official WNBL app is finally here. We don't want you to miss a minute of the action, therefore, for live scores, highlights, all your player and team info and more, download the free WNBL app today. Akuso feeding Kunek. She can't get the story. The scoring started just yet. Mailey now into McDonald. Just wants her teammates to space out a little bit. With Mailey. Just waits for someone to come to her. It's Atwell. Goes in on the left, pulls up, and knocks it down. That was a tough mid-range, Jay. That was great defense by the fire, but just a better shot in the end by Atwell. Amy Atwell, full of class. The second season with the Lynx. Spent five years at the University of Hawaii. Had a lot of success there. Here's Kudnick. Got a by Atwell. And just steps out. So it's very tight early on. Links with the ever so slight advantage of two points. Donald trying to get free. You can see Roof and Reed surrounding her. Donald still with it. Wants it back from Mailey, but she elects to lose the ball, in fact. Wickham. Good hands by Roof. Playing a lot higher up the floor already for Taylor Roof. And a good dump into Akuso. And the fire on the board. Great roll by Akuso. Perth are high hedging. Potter being a little bit slower. Fire got that ball reversal and in. Oh, <laughs> oh just as we said it. Yeah. <laughs> that well on fire early. Here's Kunek now for the response. And that's a good response by Kunek. Raining threes already. Good hands by Kunek, up and in early, getting those deflections. And just what you want to do if a player hits two early scores, you want to get up in their grill, you know, make them second guess. McDonald now into Potter. Coming off career high points on Wednesday night. Hands it back to the woman on fire at the moment, Amy Atwell, five points. Can't knock that one down. Coach Ryan Petrick patrolling the sidelines. He's guided his team to finals in the past two seasons. His fourth season with the Lynx. Would have had a lot of experience coaching this woman on screen. Sammy Wickham dumps it into a roof, and that's as easy as you like. What a pass. Sammy's had a couple of good looks early with those assists into a Kuso and Roof, and you know she's known for those look-away passes. So quick as well. Mailey into McDonald. Potter on a Kuso. Kuso wins the battle that time and Reed gets in the way of McDonald. That's unfortunate. I think as a coach, I'm happy with that. That's a hustle play. You're jumping on a loose ball. Great deflection by a Kuso. What I love, what like we said earlier, we've got to keep Potter out of that inside presence, out of that key. And Akuso was able to, you know, hedge her out outside the key and get it as far out as possible. There is Potter. Can't make the shot. And Roof collects a strong rebound. Kunek now pulls up and drains it. 
So Alice Kunak getting involved early. Great transition three. Good, good hold up by Kuzo on that play, and AK has already hit one, so why not heat check that? Oh, and a good feed to Potter from McDonald's. That's better from the Lynx. Ended a run of three Townsville baskets there. Reed. Kuso comes in and provides a screen. Roof in the corner. Kunek again, she's feeling it. This time that one rattles out. Wickham strong on the boards. Dishes it back to Kunek. The woman on fire for Townsville. Well, Kuso wanted it from Roof. Instead, she backs down on Atwell. Dumps it out to Kunek. Shot clock down to one. Even though that was a shot clock violation, what I loved is the ball movement, the inside, outside, then the offensive rebound by Whitcomb, and then again, so much ball movement. That's what I love to see. That's pretty basketball. Two of the finest teams in the league at moving the ball around. First in scoring versus second in scoring tonight. Perth up top and Townsville second. That's going to be Reed's second foul. That is early. Or we might look at McDowell White coming into the game now, but that could be a big impact on the fire. It's McDonald putting Reed to the sword and getting the finish as well. You know how powerful McDonald is when she gets going. And in fact, was no score there. So luckily enough, didn't count for the Townsville. If you're a Townsville fan, that one didn't count. Good child though, made her shot count. And after such an impressive performance on Wednesday, she backs it up tonight. And we see Woods coming in, so I think Sammy might now move to the point guard position. So here's Woods on cue, and we come up the top. Just controlling things, wants the screen from Makuso and gets it. Instead, dumps it straight to Atwell. They're not teammates anymore, those two. McDonald into good shot, thought about it, went inboard, and got it to go. She Ooh, just had a three, shot. made roof. Long close out, nice pump fake into a jump shot. That's perfect. Roof into Woods. Stepping around and can't get the shot to go. But it must be handy having a player like Courtney Woods on your bench to come on and be so versatile. 100%, she won all the awards in the NBL one off season. Absolutely. She had a great off season and you know, she's come in and she's been a absolute energy spark off the bench for the fire and you know, her attacking the ring, that's what she's all so great at. And she is so strong. So when she does have a bit of a smaller guard on her, that is a great attack for her to do. So the NBL one North MVP, All-Star five, finals MVP and championship with Northside and won a, t a championship with Townsville, of course, in the WNBL and NBL one when she was there for a season two. So she really has done it all. McDonald, though, turns it over to Kunek. Here is Sammy at the point. Kicks it out to Woods. Gets it off the foot of McDonald's. I do like that matchup of Roof and Maylee. Maylee is an undersized four. Roof's coming off a great game. So I won't be surprised if they do look for that mismatch early. Kuso now backing down on Clint Choi card. Can't get the finish, but heading to the line anyway. So two shots to come here for Zatina Akuso. Z's been looking so strong in this early start for the season. I've been really impressed. You know, she had some injuries last season, and you know, to see her come out here looking real fit, real strong. Um, I feel like she's just been getting better every game and it's great to see her out there because she is such a talent. Satino Acuso averaging 12.8 points per game, 4.8 rebounds and knocks down both of those free throws. Give her fire a two point lead, early doors. Mailey now putting the ball to the floor and handing it off to McDonald. He shares it with Clint Choi card. Just had a block in the middle of all that. So Perth will get it again. I think that was on roof. So 14 plays 12. Four minutes left in this opening term. 
McDonald looking for an option. Mailey wanted it, instead went to Atwell. Five points for already for her this game, and she'll head to the line to earn herself a couple more. Amy Atwell's gone two from three from the field so far. Her and Goodchild leading the scoring for Perth. Well, at 12 points, four rebounds, and two assists against the Flyers on Wednesday night. See Cassandra Brown coming on for the fire as well. That well knocks the first one down. Averaging 11.8 points, three and a half rebounds. Shoots 92% from that range, and you can see why. Nice action from the free throw line. Woods double team, dumps it to Akuso. Here's Wickham. Yet the score against her old team. Kunek in the corner, wide open. Wickham goes herself, and there is her first points against the Perth Lynx. She'll prefer to get the monkey off her back. Maley stepping around Brown, and Akuso takes the boards. Wickham this time feeds Woods. And Brown found some space, and she goes on the reverse as well. This time misses. Atwell now. Seven points already this game. Maley yet to score. Keeps it that way. Clear Choi card into Atwell. Clear Choi card finds herself up the top. And she's a really good three point shooter, Mackenzie Clear Choi card. She is, you have to respect her and you have to know where she is every second she's on the floor. She's great at that three-point shot, especially at the top of the key. Brown also a great three-point shooter. So too is Wickham. Townsville loaded with weapons. What can they do? They turn it over. Atwell's there to pick it off. Has McDonald ahead of her. Wanted Maylie, but couldn't get her. Lynx have done a good job on their pick and roll defense to create Whitcomb for two turnovers in those last few possessions. So that's been really good. And then they love to run down the other end of the floor. But Fire did a great job of, you know, getting a deflection there and making Atwell second guess herself whether to shoot or pass. So timeout called on the floor. Perth 17, leading Townsville 16. And this timeout is brought to you by Signet, Australia's number one digital accessories brand. Signet continues to power the WNBL. Australian owned and designed. Signet is available at JB Hi-Fi, Officeworks and other leading retailers. Visit signet.com. So a very close start, Cole. We expected nothing less. What do you think Ryan Petrick's saying here in his huddle? Well, I'd be pretty impressed. I feel like on the defensive end, both teams are doing a good job. They're not allowing too many offensive rebounds either. I think Lynx have really been attacking so far. Um, the likes of Atwell especially, she's really been looking at her shot, attacking the basket. Um, I think Fi have done a pretty good job on Potter so far. But if I was Ryan, I would just say, keep doing what you're doing. You've got to make sure, though, we stick with the defence. That's what you've got to do. And as always, if you're open, green light, shoot it. And that's what they've done so far. See the top scorer for both teams there on your screen. Atwell with seven points. Kunek leading the way for Townsville with six. So the big names getting involved early for both teams. You can see Chibatoni back on the floor. She missed Wednesday night's clash. That was due to COVID, along with Ashley Hannon and Steph Gorman missing tonight once again for Perth with that foot injury. So it's her second game out in a row. Perth still slightly down on rotations. They have got Hannon and Chibatoni back. Atwell now. Wickham comes down with it. Kicks it straight out to Kunek. Wants a screen from Brown, gets it. And gets the three ball to go. Alice Kunek is lining it up. And that's what Alice can do off the pick and roll. If you go under her, she's going to shoot that three. So too is Clinch Hoykart, though, right back at you. We said it, you've got to find her early. Absolutely. Six points for the youngster early on. And Maley gets the steal. One on one against Brown, and she just falls to the floor. A bit of a hit there from Brown. 
Mailey doing a good job in the lanes. Her being a bit smaller, she is faster than most fours. So she's able to get those steals down the middle of the floor. And oh, that, again, it's just such a physical game. A bit unlucky with that call there. Great D by Brown. Let's praise her for what she's done. Exactly, that's what you want to do. On a turnover like that, you don't give up. You run down the other end of the floor and then she did a great job, hands up, and getting the ball back for her team. Of course, Cassandra Brown from Canada has played in over 15 countries and here she is in Australia, flying her trade after a season with Mount Gambier in the NBL one, or a couple of seasons with them. Here's Woods though, knows all about NBL one fame. Kuso out to Kunek. This time it doesn't pay off. Alice Kunek with the hot hand at the moment though. Two from three from long range. Eight points for the game. She's their leading scorer. 17 and a half points per game. Fifth in the league. McDonald now. She gets to work on Wickham. And Towns will get it back. Wickham off and running, has Kunek in front of her. Elects to pull up and can't knock down the shot. Brown's there for the offensive board and she has been really good on the hustle play so far, Cassandra Brown. She has, she's brought a great spark off the bench and done the little things. Here's Chipotoni trying to bring a spark of her own. And Potter will head to the line. You will see the Lynx uh, potentially slash most likely they love to go into a full court press out of a uh, free throw shot. So it'll be interesting to see Fire ready to this, look to attack it and potentially get a layup. So Adelie Mailey back on the floor after that early foul call. And Emily Potter coming off career high WNBL points, 22 points, 13 rebounds, 60% from the field on Wednesday night. Had the Nearly the most perfect game, just couldn't get the job done for her team in the end. But she's making free throws tonight. Here you see Lynx in their press, full court pressure. They're forcing that pass, but it does leave open gaps for the offense. And Kunek takes full advantage once again. Her third three-pointer of the game already. Splish, splash. That is, Lynx are good, they are athletic, but when someone's on fire like that, you must find them in the full court pressure. Here's Potter. Trying to steal it off Woods, but Woods is the beneficiary. Kunek thinks about it again. This time heads back. Roof into Wickham. Guided by Goodchild. Goes left, goes right. Into Roof, out to Woods. This time it doesn't work. And again, they're getting the ball through hands, the fire. It leaves the Lynx. 30 seconds left to try and get the lead back. It's been topsy-turvy all game. Potter, good drive. Heads the charity stripe. See Ashley Hannon on the floor for some early minutes. Brian Petrie taking full advantage of players he didn't have in Wednesday night's game. Putting Chibatoni and Hannon on nice and early. And it is a quick turnaround. They only did play on Wednesday here in Melbourne. Then you have to fly back to Perth, back it up with another game. So I think him using his bench early will be good for Perth further down the stretch in this game. Potter knocks down the second one. Towns will go again, but Hannon's there to pick it off. And Potter can get moving with 12 seconds left in this opening term. Good child, happy to hold the ball and make sure they get that last shot. But Wickham gets sent to the ground, great defense. Offensive foul on Potter. Potter's feet were slightly moving. You'll see how she went into it, and that will always be called an offensive foul, unfortunately. So now Townsville with an opportunity to take back the lead. Four seconds left in the opening term. Wickham wants it. Can't bake it in. And it will be Perth who take the lead at the end of the opening quarter. Perth 23, leading Townsville 22. It's already set up for a great game.
Let's see who comes out of the second quarter firing right up next. Looking for your pathway in basketball? She Hoops Leadership and Confidence Scholarship can help. We're offering 30 girls from around Australia the opportunity to develop as coaches, players and officials with mentoring from some of Australia's best basketballers and some of Australia's best coaches in breaking down barriers. If you're a girl aged 15 to 18, then this is for you. This five-month program will accelerate your development both on and off the court. Interested? Head to shehoops.com.au to apply. Welcome back to the Bender Basketball Centre where it's the Lynx leading the fire by one point. Julia Montesano and, Pep, and Bet Cole here with you to take you through the second quarter action. Beck, it was a really close contest. We expected nothing less in that first quarter. What did you make of it? I think both teams are doing a really good job. Normally in the first quarter, you really want to hold a team to 20, 25 points, which both have done here. Their turnovers have been really limited. I feel like they've been getting through offense. Um, going to the well and you know staying there till it's dried out on the offensive end So, you know what? I don't think there's there's much to complain if I was both teams I'd be happy with what we're doing But obviously you want to try get a little bit of you know breathing room in this second quarter and see if you can go into half time with a little bit of a lead And it's the big names getting on the board early on Alice Kunek leading all scorers with ten points She's hit a few threes as well early on in that term. She was lining it up and then for Perth, Amy Atwell leading all comers with seven points. Clint Hoykar closely followed with six. Steph Reed back on the floor after two early fouls for Townsville as we tip off the second term. Wickham up against their old team. Dumps it to Akuso. Spinning around Potter. And can't get the finish. Good D from Potter there. Now McDonald can get going. We know about her scoring prowess. Maley into Potter. Good bit of action there from Perth. Great ball movement, big inside presence, easy layup. Now Townsville look to respond through Akuso. She just misses out there. Here's Maley now. Getting it back out to Potter and Atwell, who's feeling it so far this game, and that is exactly why. And she has such a quick release. You need to, you just having your hand up, thinking you've got it, isn't good enough. Woods into Wickham. Nice little move on McDonald. And gets the body contact, and gets to the line. So 28 plays 22. Here's Wickham putting all the moves on McDonald and then. We are in the contact there from Atwell. So Sammy Wickham at the line, playing against a team she spent five seasons with, a team she used to captain, a team she's had so much success with. The first time for her in opposition colours. So far, she's got the three points this game. Two rebounds, two assists. Gets the other one to go as well. Here's McDonald now. Getting to work on the opposite end. Maley finds herself some space. Can't get a bucket to go with it. Wickham now. Just hit the two free throws in that previous set. Flicks it to Akuso, who gives it straight to Atwell. She says, thank you very much. I'll get myself another three. And that's what Perth is so good at. They play good defense, force you into a turnover. They bang it down the court and just an easy three for Atwell yet again. It's been a three-point shootout between Kunek and Atwell so far this game. Reed, early foul trouble for her with two. Gets it to Wickham. 
Has five seconds to work with, gives it off to Akuso. It's a great find, and Akuso hits the deck pretty hard. You hear through the effects night, she does say it's a bit slippery out there. Yeah, Townsville are one of the best, I think, pick and roll offensive teams in the league. The, you know, the guards do a great job of coming off. The, do, the bigs do a great job of screening and rolling hard. And then they have that inside outside presence. And, you know, that's what's led to Alice getting those threes as well. But um, they work so well together. And hopefully Z pulls up okay from that hard fall. Looks like she's all good to take her free throws. So Perth have come out firing to start this second quarter. Amy Atwell with 13 points, three three-pointers. Let's see what Zatina Okuso can do to respond. Four points for her so far this game to go with three rebounds. She's coming off nine points, three rebounds, three assists and two steals versus Adelaide. So she got to stuff the stat sheet in that game. Shoots 86% from this range for the season. Can't knock down the first one. You can tell Zay's just a little bit frustrated with herself right now. She just needs to take a deep breath like she just did. She's doing a great job. She's getting to the right places and her shots will fall. So she gets the second one to go. And she's going to head to the bench after that heavy fall. Cassandra Brown's going to come on in her place. And now it's with McDonald for Perth. Has some room to work with. Uses it. Can't get the shot to go. And it'll be a Townsville ball. So a chance for them to get themselves back into this game. It's been all Perth so far this second term. Eight points to two. Reed now. Gets it back from Kunek. Kunek goes again. This time can't get it in. Maley into Atwell. Goes again from three point range. This time it doesn't work. She gets it back though. Amy Atwell dumps it into Maley, who banks it home. It's beautiful basketball from the Lynx, and it prompts a timeout. Home crowd getting up onto their feet. It's Perth 33 leading Townsville 25 and Maley able to bank that one home. Again, good hustle plays, good offensive rebound, getting your team another possession on the offensive floor. I think it's a good timeout taken. You can tell Perth sort of have just got a little bit of the momentum going here. They've been getting those stops, early transition threes. So just to have a bit of a reset to go again, um, I think will be significant for the fire here. This timeout is brought to you by your local Ford dealer, proudly supporting community basketball in Australia. It's the time for Townsville to rethink things a little bit. They're definitely not down by much and by no means out of this game, but. Certainly a shock to the system seeing Perth coming out and doing so well. And having to stop Amy Atwell, who's leading all scorers at the moment with 13 points, is no mean feat. Yeah, she is just on, on <laughs> fire right now. And she looks like she just has a lot more of an attacking mindset than she even did last game. So I think that's really good for her team. And if you're having to defend the three-point shooters, that means that the um, key is more open because the defenders aren't clogging up the space within the key. So that is going to help links on the offensive end for them tonight. Hearing the insights of Southside Fly star Beck Cole, she hit a game winner against the Perth. Links on Wednesday night. The Flyers have defeated both these teams, so there's a lot about how they can each team can get the win tonight. And that's the thing, fire are down right now, but in a matter of two play phases, they can be right back in it. They're a great team run by a great coach and um, a very beautiful style of play basketball. So Roof and Reed chair the ball around into Wickham now. Pulls up and gets it to go. Maybe you have a feeling Sammy's feeling her old hometown ring. She's going to be getting going soon. It's the last thing you want if you're a Perth fan to see Sammy Wickham get going. Feels weird to say that actually, but anyway, Maylie. Can't quite knock it down. 
Here is Wickham. Kicks it across to Reed. Reed yet to score this game. Could she change her fortunes here? Not quite. Mailey off and running. Just stops and props for the time being and hands it off to Clint Choikart, who's like that range. Now McDonald pulls up, can't get it to go. So Steph Reed to start things again here for Townsville, down by six. Three wins and one loss for them this season. Brown makes a count. A couple of nice hesitation moves by Reid there. Picked up the ball. The defenders stood up out of their stance. She went again and found the open Brown in the corner. And Woods with the active hands, but Goodchild finds herself free and knocks it down. And Atwell doing everything at the moment to get it to her and to get herself on the score sheet too. So great little hustle play here from Atwell. Dumps it into Goodchild. And Goodchild continues her good start to this game. Reed now. Has Goodchild to contend with here. Ruth trying to give her some space. Woods. Great bit of play from Courtney Woods. Fire within three. Brown nearly got the steal as well. Maley. And this time Woods picks that well off. And you can see on both ends of the floor, it's called sandwiching. It's where the point guard will get up really um, up and in on the point guard and the defender from the baseline will also go and almost sort of like a soft trap on the point guard so they can be someone else bringing the ball up the floor because obviously oh, oh my Atwell god yet again. she's done it again Amy Atwell I need to stop explaining things because <laughs> I feel like she's hitting a three every time I am she is putting on a show at the Bend Up Basketball Centre Amy Atwell and here she is again on the boards who does she find this time? What does she go herself once again? Why not? Amy Atwell, stop it! Amy Atwell is absolutely feeling it tonight. Back to back buckets. Up to 18 points already, if you can believe it. Brown gets a good settler there. And Forty playing 34. This is what's crazy. You feel like Link's been at home. You hear the fans. You think the momentum is theirs. But Fire are only down six. So Fire are doing a great job of, you know, just sticking with it, getting through their plays. And, you know, hopefully they'll be looking to get some more stops and finding a hand to Atwell. Atwell with 18 points, six from nine from the field, four from six from three-point range. This time it's with McDonald's. Quiet start to the game for her, no points. And Perth had the lead, would you believe it? Maley heading to the line. It's what makes the Lynx such a strong team when their leading scorer is yet to score and they're still leading the way over a very dominant fiery outfit. You can see Maley there at the free throw line, getting the first one to go. Only Maley fitting right into her new colours. 14 points per game and 15.8 rebounds are her averages. Second in the league for rebounds is Only Maley. Here's Reed now. Into Wickham. Dumping it into Roof. Kicks it out to Woods. Who just stepped out on the shot. Townsville are going to make some subs here and get Alice Kunek back on the floor along with Jess McDowell-White just for a change of things. Steph Reed still sitting on those two fouls. Here's Ari McDonald up against Maley. Atwell spins, shoots, can't score. And there is Kunek. 
Desperately need her back out there, Townsville. Kunek goes to work on Atwell, pulls up. Can't get the shot to go. Maley's off and running with yet another rebound. Steps through the defense. Atwell feeling it. And will go to the line. So she's doing it all. She's hitting threes. She's getting good assists. And now she's getting a good look. And some free throws here. And she had a big high hand in her face, but she knew that shot was going up as soon as she got the ball. Coach Shannon Sieb on there with a few instructions to his team. Of course, the reigning coach of the year. Natalie Maley, of course, leading the rebounds for Perth. Mary McDonald already has five assists. Cuso with three rebounds and Whitcomb on screen with three assists for Townsville. Atwell continues to score up to 20 points now. And she continues on her merry way, Amy Atwell. And there it is, that full court press off some free throws there, as you mentioned earlier in the coverage. And Sammy Whitcomb! Circus basketball to roof. Don't mind if you do. That looks good. And that's the way to break the press, not by dribbling, but by passing it up the floor. An unbelievable vision there from Sammy Wickham. Take a look at this behind the back, and Roof says thank you very much. That's the sort of stuff we see from Sammy Wickham on a weekly basis, it feels like. Munich into Roof. Brown now. Back with Ruth, feeling a bit of pressure. So just let's go herself. And that doesn't go. Quick Choi card at the bottom of all that for the rebound. Great defense by McDonald then. They were, Fire were wanting to run that play for Sammy. McDonald was all over her like a rash and they couldn't get through their set. Now McDonald on the offensive end gets it from Clint Choi card. Who feeds were again, and it was nearly a perfect play. McDowell White now using her speed. Brown sets herself and knocks it down. She's been such a good three-point shooter so far this season, Cassandra Brown. Miss, had seven in a row before missing her first, free, um, first three-pointer in the competition. And still shoots at a very good clip. Clint Choi card now. Through the hands of McDonald. Good start from Clint Choi card so far, though. Six points. He's hit two three pointers. And Amy Atwell is going to take a very well deserved rest. 21 points for her. See that pass just went Erin there from Clint Choi card. But Amy Atwell's got video game numbers right now. 21 points, 6 from 10 from the field, 4 from 6 from 3-point range. Two rebounds, two assists, two steals. Off the floor now. What can the fire do with these last 90 seconds? McDowell White pulls up and knocks it down. Good way to hit your first points of the game and get your team back within three. Exactly. That's a big-time shot from a, you know, a young player coming into the league. What can Perth do to respond now? It's with Maley. Potter wanted it and she got it. Going up against Akuso and gets the shot to go. Not much more Akuso could do there. No, again, great defense, just better offense. McDowell White could go for back-to-back -back buckets and then kicks it out to Woods and it's back-to-back three-pointers instead. McDowell White had her own layup there too. That was some unselfish basketball and a great three by Woods. So it's a two-point ball game here at the Bendat Basketball Centre. 40 seconds left in this opening half. Goodchild goes for a run, dumps it into Potter and gets it to go. Back-to-back -back buckets for the Canadian. with Roof now. Some high tempo basketball being played in these last few minutes. Kunek, where's the contact from Potter? And 
believe that's Potter's third foul. So she's going to walk to the bench. You can tell they're wanting to high hedge that, but Potter was a bit late to the screen, therefore coming out late, getting that foul, and that could be crucial, getting that third very, very late in the second quarter. The Choi card slaps it away from Woods. May have to play a big role if Potter is to continue to get into foul trouble. We come back on for this last set. 10 seconds to play in the opening half here at Bendat Basketball Centre. Sammy Wick come up against her old team. What she got left in this opening half. Five seconds to shoot. Can't quite get it to go. Atwell back on the floor, but doesn't elect to pull the trigger. But it was the Perth Lynx who stayed on top in that second quarter. And at half time, it's Perth 49, leading Townsville 45. And it's been the Amy Atwell show, Beck Cole. 21 points, 6 from 10 from the field, 4 from 6 from 3 point range, 3 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals. She's taken this team on her back and got them a half time lead. Yeah, what a great first half of basketball. Atwell has turned up today on her home floor. She's been hitting those three point shots, a lot of them in transition, um, nice and wide open. But, you know, she doesn't need a lot of space to get that. It's such a quick release. So, you know, if you're fire coming into the second half, you are going to want to know where Atwell is at all times. We're taking a look at the highlights from the second term. Townsville didn't do a bad job at all. They're still within four points. But like you said earlier on, it just feels like Perth have got the upper edge at the moment. But Shannon Seymour would, be, would be impressed with what his team has produced so far, wouldn't he? Yeah, Shannon is a great coach. He, he coaches as the game goes on. He sees stuff. He has such a high IQ. And, you know, Fire, they're an incredible team. They're champions of last season. Uh, they always know how to play. They have experienced vets like Koenig and Wickham on their team. Reid can run the show. Um, so they're definitely not out of it at all. Like we said, a couple of play phases, they're back in it or up. So I can't wait for the next half of basketball. Absolutely. Strap yourselves in, folks. You won't want to go anywhere. Let's take a look at the stats first off for the game so far. And you can see how even it is. Look at that. 16 from 30 from the field for Perth and 16 from 31 from the field for the Fire. So that's neck and neck. And then Perth have hit seven three-pointers. Four of them have come off the hands of Amy Atwell. Fire have hit six. Two of those have come off the hands of Alice Kunek. So it's the dominant three-point shooters leading the way. You can see the rebounds are dead even. Assists are pretty close as well. So we're in for a cracking second half, Beth Cole. We sure are. Like you said, all those stats, it's fairly even out there. It's just a couple of things, like one more made three-point shot. It's only a four-point game and, you know, maybe a couple extra free throws. So. Oh, strap yourself in. This is just getting better and better. Absolutely. We talked about Amy Atwell's game, but how about Cassandra Brown and Alice Kunek doing the work for Townsville? They're both in double digits with 10 points early doors. And then for rebounds, of course, Annalie Maley leading the way. Michaela Roof getting some early boards. McDonald with five assists and zero points next to her name. So she's doing really well to feed her teammates. And then Sammy Wickham, no surprise to see her feeding her teammates as well with a behind the back pass, which was the highlight of that quarter. But at halftime, it's Perth 49, leading Townsville 45. As we said, do not go anywhere. We've got a scintillating second half coming up right here on Nine Now. Ford dealers have backed sport in communities for nearly 100 years. 
And now, from the Boomers and Opals to Aussie Hoops, your local Ford dealer is proud to support basketball. Because all dreams start somewhere. Hands. Here come the lightning back the other way. Nice lob pass. That was brilliant from Bourne. Three from Reed, and she goes bang. What a hot start for Townsville. Kelly Wilson gets going, and a nice feed there to Davis. Shot clock down to four. She pulls the trigger from long range, and Vanessa Panousis nails it. It's competition phase, Jenga. It's team Lockie and Coley versus Frankie and Maddie. Let's give him a handshake. Good luck. They're going to drop He's the going for the same as me. Oh, oh, oh. What? Frankie, yes. what's your favourite Ford car? The gold one. The, the gold, gold one. Ooh. Ooh. Wait, test it. Oh, oh. 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 nice. What's your favourite thing about basketball? Every team, there's something special about it, and those friendships last forever. Oh. <laughs> Show us your shooting form. Team! Oh! Do it! Oh, wait, wait, Windy! Windy! Nice. You're a pro! In the middle. Oh. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Square. It's like the Monopoly board come alive. The travel guides finally do Great Britain. So I jump off from a testicle state on the sea. <laughs> In a super-sized Tuesday. Oi, governor! From London. Probably one of the most significant sites in musical history. What is wrong with you? To the highlands of Scotland. I want to see what's under a kilt. <laughs> Very good thing I didn't go traditional. The Travel Guide's Greatest Adventure of All, Tuesday, 7.30 on 9. Hello, Australia. Want to go for a ride? A summer heat wave has arrived. This is it. This is what you've been waiting for. Four spicy nights a week. It's open season. It's Love Island. Be afraid, boys. The power has shifted. <gasps> the girls are in charge. What the hell? What the hell? Surprise. The steamy villain era has arrived. New Love Island. New episodes drop Monday to Thursday on 9 now. Center, whereas the Lynx leading the fire by four points in this second versus third clash. Julia Montesano and Southside Flyers star Beck Cole here to take you through the second half action. And Beck, what a great first half we witnessed. We knew it was going to be high scoring, we knew it was going to be high tempo, and it certainly delivered. 
It really has. You just saw Potter on screen. I don't think there's many people who can match up against Akuso and her physicality. I think Potter's done a really great job so far in that first half. And then, you know, Atwell absolutely going off. And you see that woman on screen, Ari McDonald. She's been on fire so far. But what I love is even though she has zero points to her name, she's got five assists. She's getting her, her teammates involved. And that's what a good point guard is all about. She's one of a few import standouts that we've got in our league at the moment. You can see Canada pictured on screen. She's having a fantastic season. Mercedes Russell with your team back, having a fantastic season. Brianna Turner, we know about her rebounding strength. And Dee Dee Richards, we just witnessed in our previous game tonight, her team going down. But, of course, we know how impactful she is. So it's great to have a great calibre of athletes in the league, isn't it, Beck? It is. We have some great WNBA talent coming back into this WNBL league and I just think it speaks volumes of the WNBL, what our league is becoming, more people wanting to come here. And, you know, you see McDonald and Canada, two really great point guards that I think are essential for their teams to be successful. Flyers with Mercedes Russell, I know she's excellent for us on both ends of the floor. Whatever you need from her, she's going to bring that to you. And, um... Yeah, team of the round, go ahead. Team of the round, as you mentioned, McDonald leading the way there. Canada, again, who you spoke about amongst the team of the round nominees. And Melbourne and Borlais, two of the young guns in the league and Griffin, a league veteran. So a great mix there. I reckon we're going to continue to see a mix of imports and young guns in the team of the round each week, Beck. I think we are, especially because... You see Caps and Adelaide Lightning, they are very young teams. They might have, you know, one or two vets, but otherwise I feel like everyone's sort of under the age of 26, which is, you know, not really um, heard of compared to the other teams. So, you know, Jade Melbourne and Isabel Borlase, they really have, I guess, more opportunity to go be free, go out there, you know, get shots up, uh, get those assists going. So it is excellent to see the next generation coming through. Absolutely. And our player of the half this half, well, it'd be remiss of us if we didn't pick this woman, Amy Atwell, on screen. 21 points, four three-pointers, couple of rebounds and assists to go with it, and two steals. I mean, she's been everywhere so far, Beth Cole. How do Towns will stop her in this half? I know, I feel like Atwell has really come out with a really offensive mentality tonight. For me, you have to find her on transition. She's had a few too many that are open. And like I said, she doesn't need a lot of space. So I would lock down on her. Even I would maybe try face guarding her this this um, second half because she's got 21 points. She, she could be leading on to a 40 point game. And she is absolutely got video game numbers at the moment. Amy at well, of course, having a really good season so far. 11.8 points per game. 3.5 rebounds per game. She's coming off 12 points in total against your mob on Wednesday night, Beck, and she's already got 21 points at the half. So she's set for a big second half, that's for sure. But we know Townsville, they do what do they do what good teams do. They try to get back into this one. Let's see how they respond. Down by four at the moment, but we're tipping off the second half at the Bendat Basketball Center, and it's gonna be McDonald who has the ball in her hands first. Good child. Coming off a really solid game, a career best game, in fact, against Southside at well. Can't get her scoring started for the second half just yet. I like that though by the Lynx. Obviously, she's been on fire. Keep going to the well. First play run for her to come off some staggers into a nice jump shot, but well contested by Koenig. So Roof now with it for Townsville. You can see three players in the front court, so. Perth locking down pretty early on D. Reed into Akuso into Kunek. Reed back with it. Kunek spinning around out well. Could he get the shot to fall? Mainly now. And it going early. Speeds down the court and into the signage as well. That signage has copped it a couple of times tonight. <laughs> Kuso Bailey finds her way back onto the floor, but Kudek finds herself in the corner, and that's why you can't leave her open. Great skip pass by Z there. She saw she had an open mid-range herself, saw a better option with Kunik in the corner, and that's her money shot. Just like that, the fire down by one. They get a stop, a chance for them to retake the lead here. After being down by four at halftime, down by one at the end of the first term, so very little margin to this game. 
Perth had a lead of 11 points early on in that second term. Reed feeds w Roof, who feeds Wicker. This would be sweet. Can't hit the shot. Akuso, good rebound and finishes it off. Taz will back in front. Great board by Akuso. Sometimes all you need is a layup. You need to see the ball go through the net, and it just gives you that confidence to shoot those shots that are, you know, are normal in your basketball. So Maley gives a clear choy card. Hit two threes early on in this game. Good child. Good D there by Roof. Used her height. Reed now, no one really ahead of her. So kicks it out to Kudek. Can't go again. Reed out of nowhere just picks up the offensive ball and says, Thank you very much. I'll get myself a quarter three as well. And the fire of feeling it. It prompts an early timeout from Ryan Petrick. They've got themselves back in front. 53 place 49. And Reed says, Thank you very much. I'll set my feet and go for it myself. Get my first points of the game. And great unselfish basketball. Reed had a pull up jump shot. Again, she saw Kunik, who's on fire. She passed it out. And, you know, I think that was the basketball gods rewarding her. She got that board and then she had that open three. And Shannon wouldn't want any better start for his team than this right now. Absolutely right. This time out is brought to you by CTM Sport. CTM Sport is here to transform your team's travel experience. Leave the hassle of off court arrangements to CTM Sport, the experts in, travel, in sports travel management. Get the winning edge at ctmsport.com.au. So Perth now a bit on the back foot. What do you think Ryan Petrick would have said in that huddle? Just a, a bit of a momentum timeout, you feel? Yeah, just slow it down. I feel like almost roles have reversed. Perth have done a couple of quick shots and then that's allowed Townsville to go down an offensive transition and they've pretty much had open wide shots. They haven't really had to work hard for their um, opportunities on the offensive end. So. Nice little calm down, but you know, both teams have done it. You get on a bit of a roll, you have to call a timeout. Teams are too good to just let it keep rolling on. So an 8-0 run for Townsville to start off this third turn. They've come out firing McDonald's. It's a potter. And gets the shot to go as well. That's better from Perth. Great pass by McDonald. That was such a catch and a rip and way to finish that potter. Emily Potter really finding her way in this league. Had a breakout performance on Wednesday night against Southside and now you're welcome. It up. <laughs> <laughs> She'll send the invoice your way back, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so Potter makes the three point play. Perth back within one. Roof now. Into Wicker with a range of space and uses it to full effects. And another lady who doesn't need a lot of time to get that shot off. And there she is again, Sammy Wicker getting a steal. Who does she find this time round? Gets Reed back up top. Reed uses her speed, goes underneath Potter, just couldn't finish the shot. Akuso still wanting the ball. And McDonald puts on her the afterburners here. Picks it out to good child who just steps out. Pass is a bit too hot for her hands. Yeah, but it's almost too quick for her own feet. I know. I feel like she did have Atwell on the side of her to the left there. I would have shot that up quick ahead and just seen if Atwell can still get on fire here in this second half. And Reed gets it on the action once again. She's finding her feet in foul trouble early, Steph Reed with two early ones, but has hit a three and now a nice bucket to take her tally up to five points. McDonald still can't get her first points of the game. Wickham off and running. Akuso back to Wickham. Pops it up and it ends up going in. At least Sammy Wickham can make those type of shots. Three straight buckets for the Townsville Fire after those pot of free throws. Or free throw, I should say. Maley looking for Potter. Instead, dumps it to Goodchild. Tries to get around Wickham, but that's no easy task. And Wickham does the job defensively. Now getting to work on offense, pulling up. Can't drain that one. Atwell. 
to Meili. Just shoves Akuso out of the way. Can't get the shot to fall. So both teams huffing and puffing up the floor at the moment. Reed up against her opposite number three, crosses her over. And the shot falls short. Wickham with the active hands once again, gets it back from Reed, sets herself then, a low look pass to Akuso. And Sammy Wickham is putting on a show in front of her old home crowd. Townsville out to a 10 point lead. Timeout called. And Sammy Wickham again, like you said, Beck, she's known for those no look passes. Kuso knew that was coming to her somehow. She is, and Sammy just hit a three, so that made McDonald close out longer. You gotta respect her. So she was able to do a great shot fake, get that one dribble, and then you had Zatina running down the floor for a nice layup. So five come out really well in this quarter here, and I think they've really lifted up the defensive intensity, and uh, they've almost shoved it back down Perth's throat and given a bit of taste of their own medicine that they received in the first half. Absolutely right. Perth getting back, getting themselves back into this game. Down by 10 at the moment. See the leading rebounds on your screen. Maley and Akuso with six apiece. McDonald with six assists. Wickham with five. And Wickham slowly working herself into this game. 11 points, four from nine from the field. As I mentioned, leading the assists for Perth. Four rebounds to go with it as well. She's played on this floor multiple, multiple times over five seasons with the Lynx. Her first season in opposition colours on this floor. Forster on for some minutes here for the Lynx. Potter. Good child now. Goes behind the back. And a great finish for Mila Goodchild. Wickham trying to dance around Forster. Dumps it back out to Roof. Woods. Wickham. Akuso comes in to help and then rolls and then kicks it out and then kicks it out again to Woods. Oh, that is perfect basketball from Townsville. It is what ball movement, so stunning, inside, outside, ball reversal, open three point shot. If I was Shannon, I'd be a happy man. What you show on the tape during the week. Four star can't get in on the action. Just like that, the fire have turned this game around. 17 points to three in this term. Absolutely dominating. And that was a great look there by Courtney Woods. Wickham now. Probably not used to the defense chance for her on this home floor, that's for sure. Woods. Wickham now has five seconds to work with. Dumps it out to Roof, looks at it, and knocks it down right on the shot clock buzzer. They can do no wrong at the moment. The towns will fire. They silence the home crowd. What could Force to do now to get the links back into this contest? Double teams, Fakuso slaps it out. Clint Choikard able to receive it off Potter. Mailey. Clint Choikard likes the look of it. Two players hit the deck. Mailey the first to her feet. Kunek gets to work. Woods back up and running. Akuso. Just loops it in but can't get the shot to fall. So Forster now. The team down by 14 points. Clint card out to Mailey. Spinning around Woods. Couldn't get the finish. And again, Perth with some good offensive rebounds here. Forster lets loose, then eventually Akuso cleans up the mess for Townsville. Great defense by the fire there. Great team defense. We can't pop that one in. And then they're creating 
Perth to do four shots with five seconds left going one on one, which they're not going to get back in the game with that. So Potter was interrupted on that shot by the whistle. And Townsville will get the ball back. Foul looked like it was on Potter there. But I think too long in the key. Potter. Oh, there you go. Too, too long at home. Yep. <laughs> Got to get out. Got to move the car. <laughs> All the references from you, Beck Cole, tonight. Not very often you see that called. Good on the refs for being on the front foot as Roof is exactly on the front foot with that three. Back to back threes for her, and she's getting herself involved in this game as well. And here she is again with the steal. On the left, can't make a count. McDonald's, yet to score this game. Is this her first bucket? Not quite. Mailey again there for the rebound. Contends with about three Townsville players and eventually gets the call. Great hustle as always by Mailey getting after the O boards. What, what that team needs now is a bit of energy, so hopefully people can feed off her. No surprise to see Annalie Maley leading the rebound, the rebound count again. Eight boards for her so far this game to go with four points. Hannon back, Hannon back on the floor for the Lynx. But Wickham's able to steal it right out of Perth's hands. Under two minutes to play in this third quarter. Towns were absolutely dominating. Wickham lets fly, not quite. Maley out to clinch Hoy card. Good child, wasn't quite expecting it, but made work of it. McDonald's steps back on Reed. Can't get the shot to fall. Gets it back after a good hustle there from Hannon. Hannon once again. Can't get the points to go. And eventually Towns will come up with it. Reed. Finds Brown. That's a great look from Steph Reed. Equally good finish from Cassandra Brown. That's an 11 0 run for the fire. Brown finishing it off there from Reed's clever pass. Perth just don't have the answers right now. Amy Atwell hasn't been her prolific best in this third term, still sitting on those 21 points. And Perth just need to get it through sets of hands. They need to set good screens. The guards need to wait for screens. Because when you can't put the ball in the hole, just going one-on-one -on -one isn't going to get you back in the game. You need to play good defense. But that starts from also getting good shots. So then you can be in a good defensive position. This could be a good bit of momentum here for the Lynx. Ashley Hannon at the line. Yet to score in the WNBL. Cuso takes a seat. For Townsville. Her third personal. So here is Ashley Hannon. A chance for her to get her first WNBL point. And there it is. The University of Texas graduate. Played for the Aubrey Woods Onga Bandits in the NBL one. And of course, her mum Fiona won bronze with the Opals in 1996. Didn't play on Wednesday night due to COVID, but she's back here tonight. Getting her first two points on the board. Townsville again hustling. Woods hitting the deck. And you can see Goodchild and Maley both involved there. 73 plays 56, less than a minute to play in this third term. It's been all Townsville so far. 28 points to five. Have absolutely dominated. Wickham has been a big part of it. Kicks it out to Roof. A long three for Michaela Roof. Doesn't nail it. Good child. Into Mailey. Wants the movement from her teammates, gets McDonald's. Two seconds between shot clock and game clock here for McDonald. Good shot from the corner. That's a good look. 
And Townsville off and running, they couldn't make a count this time, and again, Mailey collides to the signage. So 3.6 seconds left in the third term. You can see the kick pass there to Woods. Good stop there from Mailey. So three seconds left. Good child. Couldn't put it up in time. But it's been all Townsville in this third term. They've got the game right back on their terms. And at three-quarter time, it is the fire. 73 leading the Lynx. 59 on the back of a 28-7 third period back hole. They were sublime. They were a great way to come out of half time is, you know, keep continuing their process and, you know, how they play the game of basketball. But they've done a great job. They have five people in double figures. They've been getting the ball through hands. And that's what's hard when you have the Lynx come out and you have one player on absolute fire and then they can't produce the goods as well in that second half because the fire have definitely locked down on Atwell. This is where you need to maybe run plays to get a few other people involved. Um, get, you know, get other people moving off the ball. But Fire have done an absolute job of, I think, really stopping McDonald. She still has no points on the board yet, which is, yeah, a bit astonishing. But uh, the Fire have been in, like, an ice defence, so they're forcing McDonald to her right hand, which is her non-preferred hand, and that changes the game. So Reid has done a great job of that and forcing her into more having to pass the ball or harder shot selections. So it was dead even the last time we looked at these stats, but now look at this. Townsville getting on top, 27 from 53 from the field. 19 from 47 is what the Lynx have got. The Fire have hit 12 three-pointers. Lynx have hit eight, mainly off the back of Atwell's first half dominance. Free throws, pretty even. Rebounds, pretty even, but the field goal and the three-point percentage tells it all. And the top scorers, as you said, Beck, a few players in double figures now for Townsville. Alice Kunek still leading the way, 13 points. Amy Atwell still leading for Perth with 21. Maylee and Akuso dominating the boards. And McDonald with seven assists and, like we said, zero points. And Wickham leading the way for Townsville with six assists and 11 points to her name. So let's see what Perth have got left. They're on their home floor. They don't want back-to-back -back losses. They suffered a heartbreaking one on Wednesday night away from home. We've got one more quarter to try and turn this game around, but it's been all the fire in this second half so far. Can they power their way to a fourth win? And retain their spot in second on the ladder. Kunek. Can't get the shot to go early, but it falls back to her. Roof. Getting the work on that well. Dishing it out to Akuso. Has a look. Can't convert. And here is that well. 21 points at half time. She get her game going again. Just loses control of the shot. And it's a great stop by the fire. They really are locking down and Amy at well. It is. I like seeing Atwell continue to attack. Her team needs it. But great defence by Akuso there and Alice Kunek and then Roof grabbing on the boards. And that's that's what team defence is about. Everyone hustling and communicating and working together. See, Reed and McDonald. There's been a good battle between those two. Reed's done a great job and McDonald defensively. McDonald zero from seven from the field this game. She's got it at the baseline. Potter, McDonald. Here's Maley trying to get around Roof. And falling over with the shot. Great D by Roof. Wickham now. Here is Roof again. Kunek thought about it and thought a bit too long. Travel call. Townsville really like playing at Bennett Basketball Centre. They've won all three games at this venue since the 2020 hub season. Last time Perth defeated the Fire was at home on the 19th of Jan 2020. And that's a great record because it is so hard when you fly to Perth. It's obviously it's further away, especially for Townsville. And then, you know, they do have a great home crowd there and the time difference as well. So that is a great record to have on Perth away on the road. 
Of course, last time these two teams met, it was a close battle as well. Perth getting defeated by Townsville, 91 to 84. Potter at well, pulls up. Can't get the shot to fall. Potter strong on the boards, couldn't bank it in. Wickham able to pull it down for Townsville. Neither team yet to score in this one so far. This fourth term, I should say. Wickham still with it. Gets it to Kune. Trying to spin around out well, dumps it to Akuso. And she gets the foul call to go. And just holding her ankle there. Hopefully, all is okay for Akuso. No, she had an injury with that ankle last season and struggled with it. Yeah, hopefully that's just one of those ones where you land on someone's foot. All you need to do is wiggle it around a little bit, get it moving and you're okay, but it is a bit of a stinger. But hopefully that pulls up okay because Zatina has been doing... So oh, yeah. As you see, she just lands on Potter's foot. So hopefully it's nothing too drastic with that foot injury and it's just a bit of a sting. What Satina Akuso could do when she's injury free. And Potter now sitting on the four fouls. So, what does Ryan Petrick do here? Does he keep her on? Does he take her off now? I think you need Potter out there, especially with Akuso finding her form in the second half. And I would take the risk, make sure she's still being aggressive on both ends of the floor. But with eight minutes to go, you're 15 points down. I feel like you need to get that margin back as much as you can. So McDonald now leading the assist for Perth. Good child. It's a Potter. Dumps it into Atwell. Good defense by Kunek. Reed now. Using her speed, kicks it out to Kunek. And now Kuso. Knows that Potter can't foul. So it's good defense from Potter on that occasion. Maley just loses the handle. Potter puts up the shot on the rebound, and Maley gets it back. And Akuso hits the deck again, so she's really feeling it these past couple of minutes. I really like the matchup of Maley and Roof. Even though you see there, Maley has tried to attack her to use her foot speed, which is her advantage on Roof. But Roof has made her actually force up some really tough shots. So I've been quite impressed with Roof's defense on Maley on that offensive transition attack tonight. Roof also has 10 points and six rebounds to go with that. So a good offensive performance as well. Coming off a double-double against Adelaide as well. 10 points and 13 rebounds. Six assists, three steals, 67% from the field. So not a bad game for Michaela Roof. And she's having another good one tonight. Hits the deck that time and Maley makes her pay. Nice, simple basketball. Screen the screen action for a nice jump shot for Maley. Reed getting to work on good child, stepping around. Can't bake it in. Roof. Her and Maley go toe to toe once again. Again, another physical game of basketball here tonight. This is how much it means. And the Signet WNBL wins are so precious in this game. Both teams sitting on 3 1 for the season. Melbourne, the only undefeated team left in the league. They host the Capitals tomorrow at Gippsland. Jay Melbourne's hometown. Alice Kunek at the sideline for Townsville. Wickham into a Kuso. That is a great find by Sammy. At the end of the game, I would like a highlight reel of Sammy Wickham's <laughs> passes tonight, please. Sure, that will be an easy one to make. She's had so many good moments tonight, Sammy Wickham. Of course, knows this floor so well. At well. 
gliding in and rolling it in. Her first point since half time, and boy, do they need her to continue to fire. Reed. Here's Wickham. I'll pop up the prayer this time. It's back with Reed. She's got five seconds to work with on the shot clock. Goes herself. Oh, beautiful little pass to Roof, who finishes it off once again, beating the shot clock. Almost an identical play to one earlier on in the game where Roof banked it in on the siren. Potter. Into McDonald's. The Lynx have to get to work here. Maley, this will help. It rooms out. Potter on the rebound. That's good stuff. You can see why she's so crucial to stay out there despite being on foul trouble. Wickham now. To Reed. Trying to get under Good Child. Heads to the line for a couple. I think Reed has done a really good job in this second half in the pick and roll, reading when it's her time to score, when to pass it to the big on the roll, or even when to skip it um, for an open three. So I think she's done a really good job in this second half of reading that. Step Reed with five points so far for the game. Five assists and three rebounds. Let's see Wickham constantly talking to her team. She's such a fantastic leader on the court. Reed can't knock the first one down. Sammy Wickham, of course, up against her old team. Played five seasons with the Lynx from 2015 and 2023. Reed knocks the second one down. Donald still yet to score tonight. Clinch Hoycard wants to find her, instead gets at well. She's done a lot of scoring tonight. Potter pops in another bucket. Keeping her team in the game. Now they're not giving up. There's still five minutes of basketball to play. They're only 13 points down. They've got to stick with this defensive intensity. And this is what the fire do best. Reed this time can't finish it off. At well. Gets moving for Perth. They need some back to back buckets, and instead she charges into Kunick. Great defensive read by Kunick. She closed out with just the right amount of space, so Atwell couldn't get that three and then read that she was going to go left. So, what a big play at this stage in the game. So, 80 plays 67. Less than five minutes left in this ball game. Townsville desperate for a win to keep their ascendancy on the ladder, keep that second spot. They want to go back to back in terms of championships as well. They return home to the fire pit on Wednesday night to play Adelaide. It'll be a cracking game as well in front of the home fans there in Townsville. Reed into a Cuso. That is so clever. Again, Reid, great pass off the pick and roll. Z, great roll to the basket. And you see they were bloody happy about that and one. And they're doing it on both ends, Townsville. We saw the offensive foul on the opposite end from Kunek and then Reid feeding a Kuso on the offensive end. They look unstoppable, really, at the moment. Perth trying their hardest, but so much poise, the Townsville fire. And Akuso is able to convert the three-point play. I also love how Akuso can just palm the ball so easily <laughs> right before a free throw shot. Love it. Glyn Choicard. It's a Potter. McDonald pops a hit in the background there. Mailey double teams and gets the shot to roll. I don't think that one's going to count. McDonald doesn't seem to go down easy, so she might have just got a bit winded with that there. And the offensive charge, it looks like Reedy reading that correctly, knowing that Maley's probably going to shoot this and not pass it because McDonald wasn't ready to receive the ball. So 
looks like it might have been called a tech foul. Fire, we'll get it back here. Clinch Hoy card up to her fourth foul as well. So the two bigs for Perth in foul trouble. Kunek. Reed. Now Brown. Reed with it again. This time the pass to Akusa doesn't pay off. Another foul called. And that's Potter's fifth. So she's got to sit down for the rest of the game. She's not happy about it, Emily Potter, but she has had a fantastic game. 18 points, 70% from the field, six rebounds, two assists. There's not much more she could have done. She has. She's worked hard on both ends of the floor here tonight. And Oh, unfortunate with four minutes to go. I think her team will miss her and her big presence. But if I was the Lynx now, I'd look to get, if you're a smaller, get up and in. You need to get stops and as many as possible. Aim for three in a row. That's what you normally like to do. And then let's go push it down their throats on offense. So Fire will shoot free throws for every foul from here on end as well. Just adding to their woes at the moment, the Lynx. Maley pushing the tempo. And a foul called. And there's Brooks cheers from the crowd. I was going to say that's the first um, foul for the fire, so you can tell that the fans were definitely trying to get on the refs back there. Maley's continued to work hard for her team this game. Not her night from the field, 16%, but six points. And the nine rebounds. So still could get a double-double by the end of this game, that's for sure. This is the first one. Coming off a double-double against Southside on Wednesday night with the 14 points and 15 rebounds. She was massive in that second half. Not having the same luck tonight. Reed into Brown. And that would be Clinch Hoycard's fifth as well. That's hard because you can tell they were doing the pressure, just like I said, they need to be doing that. And it's just unfortunate you don't quite allow that um, landing room. You get a foul. Again, they're going to be smaller ag again here. Ryan sort of looking out, saying, what, what do I do? What's the smartest play here? There's still time. You have to be tactical with this. So Ashley Hannon. The biggest player on the floor at the moment, 192 centimetre centre. So a big three minutes 49 for her to play that role for her team. Sandra Brown's had a few good moments in this game, 12 points for her, make that 13. She has, I feel, really feel like in that first half, she was a spark off the bench that the fire needed when they were having some low patches. Again, Maley hitting the deck. Brown right there with her. The knees will be sore tonight for Anneli Maley. She's hit the deck a few times tonight. You can see there, the ball just didn't come back up with her and Brown getting the hands involved there. So 85 plays 67, three and a half minutes left in this game. Townsville searching for their fourth win of the season, so too are Perth. But right now they're staring down the barrel of back-to-back -back losses. And Townsville continue their ascendancy at this venue for the time being. McDonald spinning and finally getting her first point of the game. You can see her breathe a little sigh of relief under the basket as well. Very uncharacteristic, but she's done well to feed her teammates tonight. Brown into Wickham and now Reed. That roll right there with her and just gets a hand in. That shot from Reed won't count. 
think that's a foul that you don't really want to commit there. Um, you know, Reedy was going to the basket, but there was help behind her. And like we said, they're on five team fouls now. So them going to the free throw line and getting two free shots isn't going to help them clawing back in this game. Where do you think it's sort of fallen apart for Perth in this second term? I mean, they looked, um, this second half, sorry, I should say, they, they looked on fire at, in the first half, really got on top of them, but it just hasn't gone their way. Yeah, I think when fire came out in that second half, they really had great defensive pressure. They really elevated that. So the open shots that Perth were getting, now they're not. And I think Atwell's only had a few shots at on this one um, in in this second half. So they have locked down. So that's where you've got to find other scorers there. But I just think it's been a bit more stagnant. Um, you know, maybe they should have looked to change their pick and roll uh, defense because Reed's just and Sammy are doing whatever they really want off that right now. Amy Atwell, just the two points since half time. Mary McDonald on screen there. Been very quiet this game. She's potentially one that they were looking to turn to, but she's gone one from eight from the field tonight. Reed getting in her way here. At well. Hannon lost her footing, but able to get back up and help on the screen. And then Atwell hit the deck. Pretty hard there. Stick with Amy Atwell. We hope she's all right. It was a very hard hit, as you would have heard on your screens. She's not getting up anytime soon. Just a collision there. Yeah, it's been a very physical game, especially in this fourth quarter. You can tell both teams are wanting it. Both teams are hustling. They're leaving it all out there on the floor tonight. Glad to see Amy Atwell get up after that one. And another thing is for the Lynx is, you know, Ari's had a 34-point game and a 27-point game. That's massive numbers. Now they're down 16 points. That's almost just because McDonald hasn't hit shots tonight. So when she's not on fire, who is going to be the person for the Lynx? Who is going to step up? McDonald finds Maley. Let's loose. And Wickham ends up with it after all that. Reed now. Harassed there by Maley. And the foul's called. That's the ball pressure that is needed right now. Again, an unfortunate foul. But she was getting up there, yeah, up in Reed's grill, and that's what they need to, you know, claw back into this game. But. Reedy's a, a vet in the point guard position. She knows to look after the ball. These free throws are brought to you by Ford Aussie Hoops. Ford Aussie Hoops is the perfect introduction to the world of basketball for kids aged five to 10 years. Basketball Australia are launching the Ford Aussie Hoops Award for 2023. To find out more, visit aussiehoops.basketball to register. The floor wipers have had a busy night tonight. A lot of players hitting the deck. It's been a very physical game, as you mentioned, Bert Cole, and that seems to be the trend in the league at the moment. Every game is, is stepping up in physicality and aggression. It really is, and sometimes each season it changes in, in regards to FIBA rules. That's where it actually stems from in, in how the game is refed, and it is more physical. But I also think we just have tough, bloody players in our league, and we are all so competitive. We all want to go after it, and that's what you want to see, hustle, people putting their bodies on the lines. But... Um, I, I can tell you, players, we're, we're getting sore after these games and we're having to recover well. It's time, McDonald driving hard and Akuso getting in her way. Mary McDonald hasn't quite been her night, but gets an opportunity here. You can hear Z talking to the refs there, but I will say she did that in a very polite manner. Yeah. And if that's the way we go about it, it's good. Refs will reply in a nice manner back. It was good to get some uh, inside comms to, you know, sometimes those chats between a ref and an athlete that the viewers don't always hear. 
So McDonald hitting both those free throws there. The team's still down with two minutes 20 to play. McDowell White onto the floor with some late minutes here. So too is Woods. Towns will have a quick turnaround playing again on Wednesday night, back at home at least. They'll come off a road trip in this round. They were at Adelaide on Thursday night, now here in Perth. It has, it's been a tough one for them. Um, the positive is they get to go home. And like we said, we have great fans in this league and it does, it almost adds like a six man on the floor for you and a, especially two games on the road going back home, that six man, that can definitely help you. Mailey now pulls up, can't get it to go. Townsville ball. Mailey had the right idea, they just need to fire shots at the moment. Perth have a very tough, tough run coming up. They play at Melbourne on Sunday, and then they play against Melbourne at home, then they're at Adelaide, and then they're up against Sydney. And Akuso makes the bucket there. So a double header against the undefeated Boomers coming up. They're already on back-to-back -back losses as it stands. Melbourne, the only undefeated team left in the league. Good child banks at home. So Shannon Seabob now pulling onto his bench. Same two with Ryan Petrick. For this last minute 28. Really impressed with Akuso in that second half. In that first half, remember we mentioned her getting a little bit frustrated because they weren't dropping. But she stayed with it, she stayed strong, saw, saw the ball go through the hole. And she was almost unstoppable in that second half in that pick and roll situation. 16 points and eight rebounds for Akuso. Shields on for her first minutes. Here's Brown. Now Woods. Puts up a little runner, can't get it to go. Jump ball called. Great to see players on the bench getting a run. Sarah Allen on for her first WNBL minutes for Perth. Here's Brown. Good D there by Jacobs from the Lynx. Great opportunity for these development players. On the floor right now. Shields one of them. Center of Excellence graduate, Brown. Finds some space and finds a bucket as well. She's so dangerous from that range, Cassandra Brown. A really great spark off the bench for Townsville. Forced her into Jacobs. Yet to hit her first WNBL points. Hannon now into Atwell. Has hit 23 so far this game. Tried to give Jacobs a look and then went on her own. She'll head to the free throw line. So the Lynx fighting right until the end. They've got two tough games against Melbourne coming up. One at home, one on the road. It's not what you want off what it looks like to be back-to-back -back losses. Yeah, that's going to be tough as well. Obviously, Melbourne undefeated. Um, they're going to want to keep their, their form going. But... Also, after two losses, you you go back to the locker room. You have a you know a big hard look of hey, what went wrong? We're better than this, and it can really light a fire w within you. So it also might not be a bad thing on the other hand. But they're going to be two games that you guys are not going to want to miss. Absolutely right. That game on Sunday at the Boombox. Shields just moved her feet one too many times. She was just no, oh. she did something a bit wrong there. <laughs> Giving a delay of game to the rookie. <laughs> Come on. The refs have been red hot tonight. They have, but it has been a very physical game. I think they've controlled it well. Both teams in the bonus. There's Sarah Allen on your screen. Williton Jr. Forster 
They need for some free throws. This time Shannon Seabom asking some questions. Great insight once again. Townsville will get a sub in the midst of all that. And Chloe forces at the line. Knocks down her first points of the game. Played for 11 minutes on Wednesday night. She gets possession back. Jacobs for a long look. Doesn't quite pay off. Roof, nearly lost it. Good pressure there by Allen, the youngster. And great <laughs> pressure continues. McDowell White kicks it out. Townsville happy to collect the win. It is a massive win in the scheme of this competition. At full time, Townsville 92, defeating Perth 76. The Fire win their third game in a row. Sammy Wickham is back in Perth, but this time she's winning in opposition colours. Fire extend their advantage over the Lynx at Bendat, undefeated at this venue since 2020. And what a win for Shannon Seabomb's side, Becko. Yeah, the Fire came out in that second half and that they just looked really, really good. They were in tune on both ends of the floor. Um, some stunning basketball on both ends and unfortunately the Lynx just couldn't show up in that second half and look it is a hard road trip but they've both been on the road and going back into this so you know Lynx will want to go back into the locker room and have a hard look and get get ready for Melbourne you know they can't lull on this too much because Melbourne are a good side and you, you want to stay confident and you want to get back on that winning streak. And there's Sammy Wickham oh great scenes there a beautiful sun into the huddle. And that's what we love about this competition. There's babies really in every team that get to enjoy these celebrations. I shouldn't say babies, I should say kids, but they get to enjoy the celebrations. It is. It's pretty Things. special for these amazing women to, you know, have kids come back and play and for those kids to grow up and still watch their mothers play. It is it is some pretty amazing things. And, you know, when you win, it's awesome. And when you do, unfortunately, have a loss, seeing them honestly does put a smile on your face. And, you know, it makes you realise, yes, we're here to do a job, but, it, you know, there is more to life. And sometimes, you know, it makes it a tiny bit easier to <laughs> get over a loss. But, you know, for a quick second, it, it does help. So shout out to all the mothers in the league and, you know, Sammy, way to show up and, um, play a great game in front of your your hometown. Absolutely right, and that's exactly what she did. Sammy Wickham, our player of the game, with 11 points, six rebounds and eight assists. She was everywhere. She continues to stuff the stat sheet like this. She's loving her new season in Townsville Colours. What did you make of her performance tonight? Yeah, we just saw there another highlight reel pass. Like you said, she was everywhere on the floor tonight. She shot her open threes. Um, she was getting in for rebounds as well. And then, um, of course, you see she has eight assists. So when Steph was out, she was able to go in that point guard position, use the pick and roll to her advantage and find her open teammates. And that no-look pass to Akuso was just box office basketball. She continues to deliver this season. Sammy Wickham, she's fifth in the league for assists with five and a half, six rebounds per game and averaging 13 points. Stina Akuso also had a fantastic performance. She led all comers in scoring for Townsville with 18 points and eight rebounds. A big reason why the Fire were able to get the job done was of course their massive second half and the fourth quarter in particular, 19 points to 17. Perth did all they could, but Townsville were too strong. And you can see Atwell, she tried her best, had the 21 points at the half, but couldn't get the job done and I mean, what a Perth look to from here, Beck. You said there's going to be a lot of hard chats. What do you think's the main message going into their game against Melbourne? Yeah, I think you just, you need to get stops on the defensive end. So they're going to go looking into Melbourne, 
what is the scout? Ryan will obviously and the other coaches organise that, but let's really lock down. I just think at the end of the day, Fire got too many open three-point shots that they were knocking down. And then on the pick and roll, they were able to do whatever they want. So really the pick and roll defense and the wide open threes, they'll look to see what they want to do against Melbourne. And you know, they've now had two losses in a row. You want to make sure that's not three. So you've got to come out with confidence and aggression going into the next game. How quickly a season can change in just a couple of games. Taking a look at the final stats for the game. Her 39% from the field. Townsville went at 49%. 52% from three-point range for the fire. Really impressive shooting. 34% there for the Lynx. And then rebounds. The fire dominated there. The Lynx, of course, powered by Anneli Maley, as they are every game. And assists, steals, and turnovers. Pretty even in the end there. And it was just unfortunate. McDonald just didn't have a night tonight. So more field goals are made by the fire. And, you know, they forced that defensive pressure and made links with a few more extra turnovers. See the top scorers there. Atwell led all comers with 25. Acuso, as we said, led the way for the fire with 18. We've got one more game to come. Would you believe it's still in this round? It's been so entertaining so far. So much action-packed hoops. But tomorrow, we head to Gippsland because Melbourne are taking on the UC Capitals at Jade Melbourne's hometown. That's going to be a great game. It's first versus last in terms of the ladder, but it's always a great spectacle when these two teams go head to head. It is, and it's especially great to get out into the regional community, show them what women's basketball is all about. And sometimes, because they are further away, they can't get to certain games. So I love whenever we have regional games, and especially here in Victoria. Like you said, Melbourne, yes, it's their home game, but that's where Jado's from. So I think that will get a great crowd, and what a great game it will be to be a part of. It was a great game tonight. We thank you for joining us on Nine Now. We hope you enjoy the coverage. And at the end of four action-packed quarters, it was Townsville 92 getting the job done over the Lynx 76. On behalf of Julia Montesano, Beth Cole and our amazing production team, we hope you have a great night.